a lot of us are tired. <laughs> Today seems kind of a gloomy day here. It's cold and sometimes, sometimes I just want to get back in bed. I just forget that everything, all the responsibilities, all the things that need to get done. I'm retired. And so this article came out on babble.com titled, Just Once I'd Like Someone to Take Care of Me. I changed my entire life because of this thought. I, I was so hungry to have someone take care of me, to be the one to just give me a break. I have four kids and um, was married for over a decade. Just didn't want to do it, <laughs> do all the work all by myself anymore. And I know that I'm not alone and there are tons of caregivers and parents and mothers who are caring a lot. And, as, and I would say on the other side as well, there's tons of parents also, um, and just people, I mean really, who are doing a lot on the work side, maybe at their jobs, they're the ones that are doing all the work for their department, let's say. And we're just really tired. And it's really hard to be the ones to say, hey, I, I need someone to take care of me. And it's really hard to know how to do that and who to ask. So this is what we're here for. And of course, you knew I was gonna say this. You knew I was gonna throw myself into this and other people that do what I do. But this is, this is really the essence of our work. We really want you to come to us and let us take care of you. Let us listen to you and put our arms around you and allow you to ask for a specific touch that you want. Or some of us also do the work of, you know, we'll, I mean, at least I do this, I provide an opportunity for, for me to be the one that kind of takes charge a little bit and gives, gives you that touch, that intuitive touch that I, that I just kind of sense from people that I think that's what they want. I want to read some excerpts from this article because I think, again, um, the author who is anonymous puts it really well. Maybe this is something that you share with the author. But then there are other days like today when I admit that I am tired, just so very tired. And I've realized that for once, just once, I would like to be the one who is taking care of for a change. Sometimes I daydream about what it would be like to have him focus on me. I'm almost embarrassed to admit that, but I'm suspect. But I suspect I am not the only one who has done this. I daydream that I will wake up to a gentle kiss with blankets tucked around my shoulders and a whisper, you stay in bed, I got this. That's what I do. <laughs> when I read that, I thought, oh my gosh, we get the blankets out, we put them around us, and you know, I give a kiss on the forehead, and it, you know, sometimes I'll just gently stroke someone's hair, their face, and oh my gosh, they melt away. Like no one else exists in all the world. Often this is um, the story is a woman who speaks, and I'll continue what she says. Sometimes I get so frustrated with all the experts urging women to put self-care on our to-do list. It just shows how it shows us how messed up we are, that we need someone else reminding us to take care of ourselves. It also implies that women don't know what's best for ourselves, while highlighting how conditioned we are to put everyone else first. Yeah, we're not listening very well, are we? Um, those who are in the role of caregiver don't always listen very well to their bodies and to what they want, and they don't feel the freedom to ask for it. If you are the partner of someone who's a caregiver and always does all the work, and I'm sure you benefit from that in tremendous ways, encourage you to create opportunities for them to get that care for themselves. They may fight you on it, they may not like it. I mean, again, because once you're in that caregiver role, it's hard to give that up as well. And trust the people around you are gonna do your work for you. Send them to someone like us for touch. You know, again, it's not always what you think. It's not always cuddling. It can be, you know, brushing someone's hair, which I've done in a session. You can just be talking and being a friend. Again, the nice thing about me as opposed to a friend, a real life friend, is that I'm not here to give my opinion or to judge or to tell someone how to live their life. I'm just there to be present, to listen. I'll finish with the last words here that she says. Obviously, it's a paradox. Quite simply, the definition of motherhood is giving, is giving to another in every way, shape, and form. We literally give away our blood supply. That little placenta parasite physically hacks into our blood vessels and burrows itself in, into the warm nest of our uterine lining and aggressively takes and takes and takes in order to make a new life for itself. Pregnancy. 
We give so that others may live. It's just what we do from the very beginning. But today, just for today, I'm dreaming that someone just once will take care of me. If you can't find anyone to do that in your life, come find me. I take care of you. I'd love to.